So the control of respiration is going to happen as we would imagine at higher brain centers. And specifically, it's going to be found in the medulla, the brain stem, and there's also going to be chemoreceptors and other reflexes that can control this. So the, this control is a neural mechanism. So there's specific neurons that are found in the medulla and the pond, so both parts of the brain stem. And these clusters of neurons, um, there's a couple different groups, one called the ventral respiratory group, one called the dorsal respiratory group. But what this does is it sets the normal respiratory rate called eupnea. And so as we look at this in a diagram, the respiratory centers in the brain stem, we can see the pontine respiratory centers here in the pons and the ventral respiratory group in the medulla just below that. So both again are in the brain stem. So what happens is these send a nerve signal, nerve impulse, to the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles. Remember, those are the two primary muscles that are involved with inspiration. So our next slide is showing a, a homeostatic imbalance that is very important to know, and it's hyperventilation. Hyperventilation is um, when somebody is breathing way too fast, they're kind of freaking out. And what the problem with that is that is going to um, increase the amount of carbon dioxide. So that could happen during like an anxiety attack, for example. So the response for that is to increase the depth and rate of breathing to remove the carbon dioxide. So again, the hyperventilation, what it does is it increases the level of carbon dioxide, thus dropping the pH to make the blood more acidic. So that stimulates chemoreceptors, which tell the body to increase the depth and rate of breathing to remove the carbon dioxide, to blow off the carbon dioxide. So we see these receptors in this next slide here. It's the location and innervation of the peripheral receptors. So there's chemoreceptors, and they're located in the carotid uh, blood vessel, carotid body, as well as the aortic body. Kind of similar to what we learned for blood pressure. So there's a receptor in the carotid body and the aortic body. And so these are in a unique location where they can sense the amount of hydrogen that's in the blood, which would represent the amount of carbon dioxide, and adjust accordingly. So factors that influence blood breathing rate and the depth of breathing are shown on this next slide. So arterial pH, what it does is it can modify the respiratory rate and the rhythm even if the carbon dioxide and levels are normal. And it's mediated by those peripheral chemoreceptors, the ones in the aortic body and the carotid body. So again, it's important to know that decreased pH when it goes down, that represents a, uh, an increase in carbon dioxide in the blood. So the summary of chemical factors are listed here. The other factors that affect the breathing rate and depth are the hypothalamic control. So other higher centers can also take over. So you can sort of cause yourself to try to relax a little bit, hopefully. So if you hold your breath, in anger or gasping for pain, that could be something that controls the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood. So these neural and chemical influences all together, we see the combination of uh, the receptors, the central chemoreceptors, the peripheral receptors in the carotid body and the aortic body. The central ones are found in the brain stem and these are all going to be responsive to stretch receptors in the lungs, irritants, and of course what's in the blood, what's sensed at these chemoreceptors. 
And again, higher levels can control this. So you can use emotional stimuli, hopefully, to zen yourself away from having too much carbon dioxide buildup in your blood. Or use higher brain centers, maybe voluntary control over breathing to stimulate the same thing.